yours, David. Cool. Thanks, Leah. Um, yeah, thanks, guys, for for taking the time to to come to this um, presentation. Um, so today, I'm going to kind of talk to you about tests that um, the unit testing kind of package that is used uh, when developing our packages, um, and uh, in particular, I'll kind of cover some of the testing basics and fundamentals, but also what is new in the third edition of test that that was released this year, right? And uh, hopefully maybe um, some of you that have kind of used test that in the past uh, will find something of use there. Right. Um, sorry, I'm, okay, cool. Um, so first, just a quick outline of the kind of um, structure of the presentation. I'll, I'll give a um, kind of brief package development workflow kind of uh, description. And then I'll consider kind of the three levels of testing that I've come across in, in developing our packages. Um, then I'll look at kind of some of the reasons why you should be testing your code in R. Um, especially if you're looking to release this um, in the form of an R package. Um, what packages are kind of used uh, for unit testing in R? And then finally, I'll come to kind of test that and give a few coding examples. Um, and in particular, some, some looking at the functionality of snapshot testing that is uh, available that I found kind of useful um, in the test app third edition. So a quick uh, kind of top level look at developing R packages. Um, I, I think um, the audience here should kind of mostly have uh, know uh, about this uh, in general. So, so I won't go into detail, but um, first, obviously you, you kind of set up a package. This is taken from my kind of BioC this workshop next week, which is why I've put in using BioC this. Um, and then um, you, you'll add a particular function, right? Um, that you want to include in the package. Um, and then you're gonna document the function, add some unit testing, um, which I'll go into detail later. Um, then you're gonna kind of run your overall unit tests to, to uh, using the function DevTools test. That's kind of the, the commonly used one if you're, if you're following test that. Um, and then uh, this will kind of either pass or it will fail, right? If it fails, you go back, you modify the function again, um, repeat until it does pass. And if it does pass, um, you're, uh, if you're using the BioC, this kind of um, structure of packages, you'll run the update script available through BioC, this uh, that runs kind of the styling changes and uh, DevTools document to, to update the documentation of your functions. And you'll finally, you'll, you'll kind of push the changes to GitHub, which will kind of trigger your um, GitHub Actions workflow, which is, uh, I'll mention a bit later what that is for kind of, but just very briefly. Then finally, obviously, uh, you'll, you'll check again if it's passed all of your GitHub Action tests, including your RCMD check, which is run during your uh, GitHub Actions. And then you'll go back. If it does, you'll um, add a new function, hopefully, or modify the package in some way. If it doesn't pass, then uh, again, you'll modify the function un until it does. So, um, so kind of in that package development workflow, there are three levels of testing that are really going on, right? At, at least this is how I like to, to think of it. You have your unit testing, for your individual functions, right? Um, to actually test um, the, the, the functionality that, that you um, have included in the package and whether that is um, doing as, as you expect. You also have the level of looking at the overall package kind of structure, whether your description fits um, with, with the intended uh, or the expected for our packages, whether you have all the dependencies named. And this is often done using RCMD check or BioC check. These are kind of functions that, that uh, uh, go through your package and look at whether you have any kind of outstanding or irregularities there, right? Um, finally, um, 
GitHub Actions might be one that um, you, you've heard of before, but uh, unless you've kind of um, been developing packages, it's um, it's not something I came across anyway until until Leo introduced it to me. Um, but this is kind of for what they call continuous integration, and in this instance, we're using it to test um, your package runs on multiple operating systems, right? So in today's presentation, I'm really going to only focus on looking at uh, how unit testing using the, the test that package. Um, um, but it's good to know that, you know, there are, there are these other two levels of testing that, that you, you will have to do if you end up making an R package. So why unit test, right? Um, in reality, I think you, you guys all do this manually when you're writing code. So, say you've created a function in your code, right? Often um, you'll have a look at the output in the console um, um, and have a check, you know, if you have the correct number of columns or rows, if you filtered the data, um, if, if the names of it look correct, if the class looks correct, you might even include kind of like a, a stop if not statement, right? To, to make sure that every time you rerun that, um, it's creating the correct output. And then finally, you, you'll just repeat that, right? You'll, you'll keep including new functionality and you'll keep having a look at it manually. Um, so, so unit testing really is just the automation of this process, right? Uh, you're, you're creating tests that um, uh, are run every time you update a package with a new function or, or make any change. And then what, what the advantage of this is, is it reduces your, your kind of overhead for having to one, rerun these tests manually, right? Every time, every time you add something new, um, but also um, kind of thinking about whether in a really complicated package, for example, whether if you make a minor change to an existing function, is this gonna break um, some, some functionality of the code for, for a user, right, in the future? Um, and it's, it's really hard to cover all of your kind of instances um, just, just by thinking about it. So, so this is kind of a, what unit testing does for you. Um, another advantage that I've kind of found through, through unit testing is that it really forces you to um, follow this kind of functional programming principles, right? Um, unit testing is often um, created by, by having a test per function or a test per kind of unit of code, right? And if you um, um, are running into kind of bugs or, or issues with your code, often what you'll do is to, to create a test is to bracket out or create a function to wrap around the bit that's giving you issues um, into a function to, to write a test for it. So, so in that way, you end up kind of following these good, good programming principles um, just by, by having to, to test your code. So which, which packages really are there for unit testing in R? Um, so I think most of you will have heard of test that. Um, that's the one that we'll kind of cover today. And it's also the most kind of popularly used one um, amongst R packages. Um, I, I recently also found out that there is this other R unit um, kind of package that um, uh, in honesty, I think is, is not so widely used right now. Um, and uh, I couldn't see really any advantage of using our unit um, um, kind of outside of the fact that test that has a few more dependencies kind of in terms of its own, its own packages in, in tidyverse. Um, but I thought I'd kind of mention it uh, in, in case, you know, um, any of you are curious of what other options that there, there might be. So uh, what, what is kind of test that uh, and what, what does this R package kind of achieve, right? Um, so, so there's a reason, you know, it's, it's used in over 5,000 packages kind of right now in, in, in CRAN. And it really facilitates the easy um, kind of um, uh, addition of unit tests to your R package, right? Similar to, to use this um, uh, or dev tools that they, they um, kind of test that is a package that has um, kind of, uh, or use this in this case as a package that has um, kind of easy functions that allow you to uh, kind of streamline your project, uh, sorry, your package development workflow, right? 
So use this, use test that is going to create a test directory in, in your R package and also add the dependency um, of the test that package to your suggest field. Um, uh, the, the use this use test command um, is going to be the one that you use to add a new kind of test um, for a particular function um, to your package and that will correctly add an R script of the correct kind of naming convention to the um, test directory that is created. Um, and uh, I'll go into kind of more details, I think it's easier to illustrate um, um, the functionality of, of this with real examples in, in code. But overall, in principle, test that is kind of just uh, includes a set of functions that makes it very easy for you to create unit testing, right, for your package. One good general kind of principle to follow is that if you do catch a bug in your, in your code, right, um, maybe you're running it or a user has, has kind of raised an issue on GitHub, then you, you should, alongside making a, an update to your function to, to correct for that, write a test for that update so that, you know, in, in future, uh, th that test will be automatically run every time and you won't, you, you'll make sure to catch that particular issue. So an example of a very kind of simplistic skeleton of a, of a kind of test that um, command, right? You, ha you have two really um, main components to a test that. And that first is, is an expectation of what you think uh, it, it sh your kind of code should result in. And then um, what they call in their arguments, the, the object, but that's really just the, the output of your actual code, right? And if basically um, test that will check whether these two things match. Um, and if they do, then uh, all good, your test is passed. If they don't, it will return an error, right? So in this case, um, uh, this is just a, a very simplistic example of how you might test, for example, uh, the mean function, right? Um, if we generate two vectors, x and y, y is the same as x, just includes uh, the additional value na at the end. And then we, we, we run these uh, kind of, um, these actual tests. So the test that command starts with uh, the function test underscore that. Um, you have uh, a space here to, um, write a character string to describe what it is you're testing in that test, right? Um, so here we're testing the mean function. And then you have a set of these kind of expect um, equal um, um, kind of, or expect underscore um, functions, right? That um, kind of the, the suffix of these functions is um, kind of regulating what it is um, that you're actually checking, right? For example, expect equal. Um, if you input an object um, as your mean of the vector x, then you expect as the vector x is one to three, then it should be true uh, two. Um, if you expect um, true, this is basically what is included as your object has to evaluate as any kind of logical vector of length one that is equal to true. And then it will pass, for example, here, if you've meaned your Y that includes an NA um, and you've tested whether it's an A with, with NA. Finally, you can also expect uh, underscore errors here, right? Uh, if you want to test that your, your code actually catches um, kind of uh, an error when, when users has inputted something incorrectly, for example, here, um, you'll have the character strings one and two instead of, instead of the actual numeric values and, and that should kind of be caught by the expect underscore error. Yeah. So let's kind of go through more of a, a slightly more kind of complicated um, example of um, kind of to illustrate um, when you might want to test and the advantages, right? So, so this is a kind of function, I kind of hope that um, a lot of you are familiar with Tidyverse, but don't worry if, if you're not, right? It's, um, this is just uh, for illustration purposes. Um, I'll take you through this code. So, so this is really um, a function just to get a summary stats of a particular column from, from a data frame, right? 
you have your data frame as your input, you have which variables you want to summarize, which variables you might want to group by, and also the, the functions you want to use to summarize, right, as a list. So here, um, by default, we'll use mean and SD. Um, the, the first if statement here is just to check if group vars is null, then you don't need to group it, right? So um, it will only group by these group vars if, if, if this is not uh, a null value. And then finally, it will just uh, produce a kind of summary stats of this data frame by summarizing at those um, inputted variables um, using the functions that you've included as a list, right? And then return that outputted data frame. So as an example here, we'll just create kind of a, a, a dummy data frame, right? Which has um, these two variables that are characters and then X and Y that are kind of numeric variables, right? We'll use the get sum stats data frame. So the input is the, the data frame we've just created. Um, we want to summarize, let's say one of these variables, which is, which is Y, um, the, the, the numeric variable Y. And then we want to group by the, the variables var1 and var2, right? So, so this has produced what you expect is kind of a, an output here that, that that's uh, kind of intended. And then um, one, one thing you might do now is to kind of look at it uh, and have a read. Does it have the mean? Does it have the SD column? Do these look kind of accurate? Um, and obviously, um, uh, in this case, to um, kind of automate it in a kind of test that kind of way, you can create a test um, to check that um, if you call uh, this code and save it into an object, we call it, let's say, DF summary. We want to check whether DF summary is equivalent to if we just done, we have called this kind of manually, right? So in this case, we've um, uh, the, the expect equivalent will check whether the two objects, um, here is your, your actual object that is returned by get some stats, and here is your kind of expectation, right? We've run a very similar set of code, and um, basically it, it says that your test has, has passed, right? These two are the same. Um, obviously, this is a very kind of very minimal example. You'd, uh, in reality, you'd probably want to include more kind of um, um, checks here, you might want to include the, the kind of um, column, the class, uh, the number of columns, sorry, the number of rows in the data frame. But, but in principle, this is, this is uh, what, what you would do, right? Um, so in the future, for example, if you updated your get some stats um, function and um, included some additional functionality, you will always um, rerun this particular test to make sure that that additional functionality doesn't break um, this test. Right? So say you come across um, a situation where um, you, your code doesn't work as expected on, on the output of, of get some stats, right? So this could be you when you're, when you're running it. So, so the, the, the output of DF summary, right? Um, if you remember, is, is this data frame where, where all of your SDs look to be the same. Right? Um, if we just did want to do a sort of filter on this DF summary and let's remove all of the duplicated SDs, right? Um, what you might expect to return here um, is just one row where all of these have been, the, the other two duplicates have been removed, right? Um, in fact, it, it doesn't do this. Um, and, and the reason it doesn't is because um, you, it, the, the return of um, get some stats right now is a kind of grouped um, tibble, right? So, so like you, you, it hasn't been ungrouped when you've um, grouped it by two kind of um, variables here. And in this case, right, you, 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 this isn't kind of the, the code that you would expect and it might kind of interfere with your downstream processes, right? And in this case, what, what you could do, right, is to ungroup it and then do the filter. And obviously this is what you would actually get as the expected output. Um, so this is kind of an illustration of when you do catch a bug in future, what I would do is obviously add an update to your, to your existing function, which is um, uh, the only change that you've made here is that um, 
you've added another kind of ungroup function after you've done the summarize. And then we add another kind of test here, right? Um, we, we, we perform the get sum stats here. Um, and then we write another test where we expect equal. If we have a look at, uh, we, we just had the code that we kind of ran before where we filter the duplicated SDs. And then we check the number of rows there, right? Um, and it should be one. If it was incorrect, it should be, it should be three, right? And obviously now um, that we've corrected the get some stats function, um, this test will now pass, right? So, so, so yeah, this is just kind of um, a kind of illustration of the overall workflow of, of kind of unit testing, right? Um, you, you've caught an error, you wanna change your function, but then you wanna write another test to make sure something like that doesn't come up again. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, I like that in this new test that version three, they've also included these emojis, right? Um, it always gives you a nice <laughs> feeling to, to have, have your kind of a test pass when you're running. it. So now I'll kind of have a coverage of what's new, right, in, in the test that third edition. Um, I, I think that this is probably what um, most of you are interested in if you've kind of looked at test that um, before. Um, so uh, kind of here, um, the first thing that is, is new is kind of this idea of additions, which I'll speak about in a sec, but there's a reason that this is kind of called the third edition rather than um, the third version of, of test that version. It's not exactly kind of um, uh, version 3.0, right? There's also some deprecation of kind of old features of test that um, when they call it uh, edition two or version two, which is good to know about because um, they will kind of break your existing code if you do end up using test that version three, right? That I'll go into. Um, um, the Waldo kind of package now that is something that test that has shifted to using to look at differences um, between kind of um, when you run something like expect equal between two objects, um, the Waldo is uh, what is used now to compare the two objects. And really um, this is just to help print out the difference between those two objects in a more informative way. I'll go into that too. Um, then we'll have a look at snapshot tests, which um, are kind of tests that where you don't actually have to write your expectation out in code, you can kind of have a uh, look at to just set um, in kind of in stone what your expectation is. Um, and finally, you can uh, use parallel testing to kind of reduce the um, runtime of your tests if you end up having really long tests for your package. Right. So, so what are additions? Um, the idea of additions has been kind of created by, by Hadley Wickham as, a, as an idea to have an optional opt-in for the additional new features in a new package, right? Um, this, the, the, the reason for this is because I think test that is kind of hindered by its own popularity, right? It's, it's used in so many packages that if you add something new now that breaks the um, um, previous kind of um, functionality, you're gonna have many of those packages um, run into issues, right? So in this way, um, you, you, you have by default, the test, test that version three used in, in, in with all of its new functionalities for new packages. However, for old packages, you have to include um, explicitly add this line to your description to make sure that you're automatically using the addition three, right? And in this way, it enables the backwards compatibility of, um, of your kind of uh, test that version three because you, you, you wouldn't use it unless you've explicitly included this line, right? So some of the kind of, uh, th there was quite a few deprecations and I'll link to kind of the, um, really they're found kind of in the vignette of, of test that. Um, the most kind of important ones that really I, I came across that, that I'd used in the past is so now they've deprecated the context. Um, what this was previously used for is to set at the very top of a script, um, just a, a kind of line or a character to say what that entire test script would be testing, right? Um, 
And they've now just deprecated that entirely because they think it's kind of redundant if you've named the file name in an informative way. They say that's kind of duplicating that information, right? Um, expect is, is was a previously a function that checked whether the object was um, of an expected class, right? Say uh, in, if X was a matrix, you would have expect is that matrix and then the class matrix, right? Um, they've now changed that to be more explicit in um, expect S3 or expect four, X4 class, um, just to make sure that um, you're kind of robustly querying the correct type of class, right? There's no ambiguity there. Finally, you have expect equivalent, um, and that has been shifted to um, kind of expect equal or expect identical. I believe expect equivalent, the only difference between expect um, um, equivalent and expect equal in the past was the fact that expect equivalent, I believe, didn't check um, um, attributes. One of them didn't check your attributes of your package, right? Um, but instead now um, it's all in expect equals and they have a kind of um, an argument where you can say check attributes and then set that to true um, or set that to false. And that will be the, the um, kind of same functionality as the previous expect equivalent. So yeah, if you do end up updating like um, your test to test that version three, then these are probably some of the main things that you will have to update. So, so it's not a lot um, really, but um, he, the, the, the kind of transfer time that they say is expected is less than 30 minutes right, for, for any old package. So Waldo comparisons, um, I mentioned this was basically um, using a different engine beneath the kind of expect underscore equal um, function to check the difference between two objects, right? Um, and, and really in, in this case, like um, this is, uh, the, the first line of this code is um, a, a new function they've included that allows you to um, in kind of your vignette or for the purpose for illustration, set the local edition of um, test that that you're using, right? So right now we're using test that version two. And if we run something like this, expect equal um, as character um, um, and then as factor one to 10, right? Um, it, it previously produced something like this, right? Which is not super informative as to really what, what this means um, and whether that is actually the, the difference here, right? Um, and in the, the new version of test that, if you set the local edition to three, what you can see is that, you know, um, uh, the, the actual is a character vector, expected is an S3 objective class vector. So it more directly points you to the exact thing that was different, right, between these two um, vectors. Similarly, if, for example, um, you have a, a data frame and you've just removed a column from the data frame, right? And you wanna check whether it's equal to the original data frame. Obviously um, the, it's not because it's missing the column. However, the previous um, comparison here gave um, <clears throat> pretty much a, a weird kind of output, right? It doesn't, this, this output doesn't lead you to think like the difference between them is a missing column, right? It's, it's telling you some difference between uh, some components of the data frame, right? Um, now in Waldo 3, it's, it gives a much clearer output. I think, I think this is um, a much better illustration of the advantage of Waldo, right? Like the, the actual length is four, the expected length is five, and you can see that um, this, the, the first column sepal length is, is the one that's missing, right? Um, so I think uh, th this is kind of one reason that you might wanna shift over to um, test that version three. Um, if you have if you have an old package, um, just to have to make sure that you know you you, you can see clearly the difference between objects uh, using water, right? Um, the other kind of I thought was uh, quite a really nice um, change uh, or improvement um, that they've thought about in test that three is um, snapshot tests. So usually in a in a kind of test that um, kind of statement, you have the expectation written in code, right? 
you, 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 um, or, or text, right? And sometimes this can be can be quite difficult to do, right? Um, for example, um, if you have a really long HTML file, and this just, uh, if you have a look at the kind of raw um, output of a HTML, you, you know that it's, you know, incredibly kind of complicated and trying to either design a, a regex for that, or just in general, write out the entire string with loads of kind of um, back, back, backslashes to, to break out of all the weird characters is, is, is often super inconvenient, right? Um, the, the reason I actually shifted to using this is for ggplots, right? H how do you check if um, a plot has the expected correct output, right? Um, what I was doing before was, was really... I think we lost David, no? Oh, no. <laughs> So yeah, just um, uh, snapshot tests. Um, well, the reason I've used them is for ggplots, right? Um, it's tough to kind of um, uh, know whether you've plotted something correctly and write a code that kind of um, checks that, right? And in the past, I've really just tested whether the, like just visually looked at it um, and, and to see that is correct. And really what snapshot tests do, they enable you to create a kind of snapshot as the, the name suggests of the output of the first time you run that code. And then it compares that to the um, kind of expect, that, then it uses that as the expectation for this in subsequent runs, right? So then you have a fixed kind of file that is saved um, either of text or of the plot, um, which is snapshotted upon first run. And that will be compared to every subsequent run after that. Um, and if you, any of you have kind of tried to uh, use, I, I never have personally, um, the verify output command in the past. Um, this is now kind of what's been superseded by snapshot testing in, in test that version three. Um, so just a kind of very simplistic um, example here. Um, um, like um, uh, if we create kind of a, a, a plot of uh, a table with X and Y as one to five, just a standard GM point plot. Um, um, I, I'm gonna show you uh, kind of interactively how to um, do that plot now, uh, but um, because the, the overall snapshot um, kind of workflow requires you to be in a, um, um, a kind of project-based structure. And so you can't run it just as part of the RMD, right? Um, so, so here we have a... Um, We're still seeing your, um, your browser. Ah, uh, really? Uh, okay, one sec. I'm gonna. Um, sorry about that. Give me one sec. Um, now you can see, hopefully, my R R R screen, R Studio screen. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is really just a, a, an example package I've I've created before. Um, and I just used, uh, the, the only things I've done is uh, used run, use this, um, uh, create package, and then use this, use test that, and then use this, use test, right? Um, so uh, the, in the top uh, kind of root of your package, um, the test that will create this kind of tests directory, um, and then use underscore test the, will, will create this kind of um, uh, kind of R file in which you will write the test for a particular function, right? So in this case, this is uh, the identical code to what I showed you before, right? Um, um, this is kind of the identical plot to what I showed you before, right? And really it's, it's kind of difficult to verify from the object itself, right? Whether whether you've got it right, unless you know the deeps and kind of 
dirties of a ggplot, it, it's, it's hard to go through this and, and check which actual parameters are, are expected as they should be. Right? So in this case, we, we um, use the, um, the kind of uh, function, which is from test that version three called expect underscore snapshot underscore file. Um, the two inputs for this are one, the plot, um, uh, which you want to save as your snapshots up, uh, upon first run, and two, the kind of name you want to give it in your snapshot. Right? Actually, let's give it something better, maybe like snapshot um, test plot. Right? Um, so to return this actual function, and if you want to be able to kind of rerun this every time, what they suggest is you write a, um, a kind of small wrapper function, which does the saving of your plot, as well as returning the file path for your plot. Right. Um, so, so in this case, it's just a, a wrapper for the ggsave function where um, you input your file name, your plot, your path. Obviously in reality, you might wanna include like the width arguments or, or a dot 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 for the remaining arguments. Um, and then what you return is the um, kind of path or the directory and the file name, right? So, so just the overall path to that plot. Right. Um, uh, one thing that I noticed is that um, you, you can't actually run this in, in um, um, just as a kind of command enter from inside the script um, initially. Um, if you, uh, you have to um, run uh, kind of the test file function um, to test the entire file. Um, so I think it's called test underscore snapshot. Mm. I think you're missing a test dash. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. It's this, right? Yeah. So in this case, right, this is the, yeah, you're right, Leo. Um, this is the first time I've run this test, right? And what it says is we've passed the test um, and uh, we're saving the image, right? Um, which is what happens when we run this GG save path function and then um, test that will then copy the saved image into this new, newly created folder in your test that directory called underscore snaps. This will be where all of your snapshots are kind of saved, right? Um, and the within this, the structure will be Kind of um, each directory will be directory will be named after the same as the name of your kind of um, test that um, R script. Right? And in here we have um, the snapshot test plot, right? Um, um, which is basically what we've created as our snapshot for the expectation um, if we rerun the code. Um, so now if we rerun the code, right, we we end up with um, the, it's, uh, it just passes, um, there's been no change to the code and it's, it's all good, right? It matches um, the, the, the output of our code matches the same as the um, saved snapshot. If we, for example, just change these um, two values to let's say instead of one to five to one to four, and then rerun this, um, oops, save, rerun this, and now we end up having a fail, right? Um, and what you can see is that um, it's found that uh, your, your new newly plotted plot has changed to your old one, right? Um, and what it also has done is saved a um, dot new PNG as the, the output of your new one, right? Um, what, what it seems to suggest right now is to run this snapshot review um, test, right? And uh, through my own testing, this hasn't worked. And I think it's uh, still a bug with the, the, the package that they need to result in. Um, what this is supposed to do is to create a shiny kind of interactive um, interface by which to, you can see the old and the new plot alongside for easy comparisons, right? To see what has changed. Um, um, but in this case, what we can do um, just manually is kind of to, to open the two plots. Um, I don't think you can see this on my screen, but um, you can kind of do this and just visually have a look at what has changed, right? Um, but yeah, I think 
that overall is is kind of the nice way to um, kind of um, uh, to to look at your uh, to at least test plots in a much more kind of robust way because um, it actually compares it uh, to to the file that is saved. So finally, um, uh, they include parallel testing, right? Um, in in test that version three, this was also a big um, one that I wish maybe I, I would have had access to um, when I was writing up my my last R package because I spent a lot of time um, um, trying to decrease the the, the runtime of tests below kind of the requirement for for bioconductor. Right? Um, in the same way to switching to using the test that version three, um, you just add this kind of config um, line of syntax to your description file of your package if you want to run them in parallel. Um, this will automatically um, set up your um, test to run in parallel when you run something like DevTools uh, test. And this kind of speeds up tests, but does have, as with any kind of parallel processing, some overhead associated with setting up your multiple R instances um, and collecting them together, right? So if you have really fast tests, then um, this probably won't make a difference and might even slow your test down. But if you do have kind of like very um, uh, long tests, then this can be a significant improvement in speed. Um, also, there, there, uh, there's no order associated, right? There, there are some kind of parallel processing packages, or you can manually um, set the order yourself when you run parallel processing. But in test that version three, they don't put um, any ordering to, to the run. Right? Um, in the traditional test that version two, your tests are running, I think, um, kind of alphanumerical order. Um, but what this means is that um, if you want to use parallel testing, you can't have any dependencies between your tests, which can, you know, more often actually than, than I realize be introduced sometimes um, um, between kind of uh, when you're just running tests the, the traditional way. Uh, is this um, uh, running the different test R scripts in, in random or inside a test R script, is it running the different test that calls at random? Hmm. Um, I, th I believe it's running the different R scripts at random, um, not the different uh, individual unit tasks. So you, you could have a, then a, an R script then with some dependencies. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're sorry. Yeah, you're correct. As in, um, yeah, well, if I say between tests here, it's, it's kind of ambiguous, right? Um, yeah, you, you can have kind of within a script um, dependencies between tests. I believe. Um, however, you can't have um, kind of between your test scripts dependencies. Right? Yeah. Um, so, so that kind of leads me to kind of conclude um, uh, my presentation today. I've just included some of the resources that I really found kind of useful um, when looking at test that, right? This is a uh, the standard R package um, book down that has been made and uh, the test page in that kind of covers overall um, much better than I have the um, reasons for testing and um, also the principles of how to use test that. Um, the test that vignette that has kind of detailed um, sections for each of the new additional features, right? I, I haven't covered all of them, just some of the ones I found most useful and also all of the other deprecated functions, although um, again, I think a lot of them were kind of rarely used. Um, finally, the, 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 a lot of this presentation has been inspired on um, by some of the, this webinar um, where, that Hadley gave on the new functionality in test that version three, which I kind of recommend you to, to, to go through. And he, he covers some of these topics in a, a bit more detail. Cool. Thank you very much uh, for, for listening.